holy crap, <laughs> we're going to have trouble with this one. You're listening to Relationship Renegade. I'm your host, Dr. Jameson Mercier, licensed clinical social worker, and it is the weekend, baby. So you know what that means. Mia's in the house. What's up, Mia? Hey, how's it going, guys? It's the weekend. It's the weekend. It's the weekend. And um, so we're back on weekend edition of Relationship Renegade podcast. Um, so I hope, I hope, uh, you guys enjoyed the series that just ended. Mm -hmm. And and if this is your first and you're like series, what series, then you know what you got to (laughs) do. Check back. Already got, you got to go back. Like, what is it like six or eight episodes? Yeah, we had a lot of episodes on that series. There was a lot of, we were just talking before we hit record and how fun it was for us to record those episodes on unsolicited advice. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, if you're someone who continues to uh, deal unsolicited advice, like we said, you peddle that stuff, you uh, go back. I know, right? (laughs) Go back and figure out the appropriate, if needed, way to do that. But we're turning the page and we're going to be talking about something that we all, I want to say know about, something that we all deal with. Mm -hmm. Is that, I guess that's Yeah, I would say so. Deal with. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you either hate it or you love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. We're you talking- know. <laughs> oh man, you, you you have sometimes you have too much and sometimes you mm. have too little. Right. Either way, you can run into problems. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> so we're talking about money, guys. Money, money, honey. Yeah, greenbacks. Cabbage, dinero, lettuce. <laughs> You're talking about bread. <laughs> I I don't have anything else. <laughs> Mo- moolah. Moolah, yeah. Okay, we are talking about money. <laughs> yeah. And um, and if you have more ways, uh, I mean, I have some <laughs> more too. But just let let me know your ways how you refer to money. You know. Either way, guys, money is something that it, it, and so how do I say this? How do I say this? It touches every corner of our lives. Mm-hmm. And if we're not careful, money will run those corners as well. There are people making some major, major sacrifices, decisions. In pursuit of money, mm-hmm. some people have uh, rejected money and currency and are living completely uh, contrary to popular society and culture, mm-hmm. That's you know, point. Mm-hmm. And, and then there are people who are getting married and divorced because of money. So it's like... yeah. We won't talk about it. We, I mean, I'm, I'm just like stumbling over myself here because the more I talk about it, Mia, the more I'm like, oh, oh, damn, there's like a, really a lot here. Yeah, there's a lot here. And so the reason, one of the reasons why we wanted to have this Money Matters series is because, um, well, one, it's tax season. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, not just tax season, but it's stimulus season too. Stimulus season. And that's so true. And, you know, there's been an abundance of memes and people commenting on the stimulus checks and what they're going to be doing with it. And then you have other people that say, is it enough? Is it not enough? Is it, Mm -hmm. you know, who does it go to? Who does it not go to? Who does it benefit? Who does it not benefit? And, um, All of that to say at the very root of it is money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and so 
We talk about relationships here on Relationship Renegade, and your relationship with money Mm. is really one that you need to figure out, get a grip on, get a handle on. Yeah, definitely. And in some ways, I am still trying to figure out what my relationship (laughs) with it is, you know? (laughs) Um, But I think, you know, it's, it is one of those things that even if it's not a, one of the most obvious things in a relationship, there's an undertone sometimes in multiple relationships that you're in. You mean undertone of money, you mean? Yes. Yes. Like, um, for instance, we're going to talk about money and dating eventually Mm -hmm. and my experiences with that and money and marriages and, you know, money and friendships. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? Um, Have some stories there too. And, um, you know, how much is too much? Uh, I know one of the things we were talking about, Jameson and I, before we hit record was, um, was, I guess, being young, being single and not having accountability for other things mm. or responsibility, not maybe accountability, but responsibility mm. and kind of flying off the handle, no one to check you while in other phases and seasons of your life, you have a lot of people to check you. So this series is going to be so fun, I think. I, I Listen, I... <laughs> I, I believe it will be. I believe it'll be interesting. Um, I believe it will be the kind of thing that just makes you go, huh, do mm-hmm. I do that? Am I like that? Right. Uh, go ahead. Because single, married, divorced, it doesn't really matter what the status of your relationship is. Mm-hmm. You deal in money. Right. And it starts at a really young age. Yeah. Um, really young age with what you can or can't do. Or do you remember the first time? I don't know, Jameson. Do you remember the first time where you were like, um, you realized that money had some sort of stake in the game? So, yes. Uh-huh. Yes. And... So for me, I realized that back when I was maybe five, six, or seven years old. Okay. Okay. So some of you know, and if you're new to this, um, I I was born in Haiti. And if you know anything about Haiti, the first thing you'll know is that it's the poorest in the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And so I realized early on just the influence that money has. Um, I was fortunate that my parents were living here in the States. So we were receiving regular remittances. They were sending money um, back to Haiti for me, for my care, for my parents, uh, parents, my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to live a little different than the neighbors. Okay. So I was able to go to private school and, you know, I had a driver. Um, and so the contrast was pretty, it was in my face, just how different we were. Mm. Uh huh. So when you ask, when I became aware, girl, I, I knew, I knew. And, and, and then despite being aware, believe it or not, it wasn't like I was wealthy driving up in a mm-hmm. castle in Haiti. I was just, in. I had incrementally more. Mm-hmm. And it really didn't take much for you to be that much in, in that much of a better situation. So, so no, I've, I've been aware. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How about you? Um, well, it's actually kind of a joke in my family now. Uh, I guess here's where my privilege comes in. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Don't deny I'm, it. Wear it. Wear I'm it. not going to deny it. Um, but you know, my parents um, were young parents when they when they um, adopted me, and they were 23. They were going through college. They didn't have either families 
my mom or my dad's side weren't in a position to help much financially. So they were kind of doing things on their own um, and together and with what they had and working multiple jobs and such. So a little context. So, but for me, I didn't really know I guess the influence of money on life until later on, I feel very, in some ways, fortunate. And Define, then, hold on. No, 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 no. Don't gloss over it. Later what? on, give me a number. Later on. Okay. I was probably. Don't tell me, don't tell me like yesterday, Mia. No, <laughs> for some maybe, but <laughs> no, my parents will probably say that. No, just kidding. But um, probably I was definitely in, I, I think I was in like middle school. Okay, well, that's not too bad. I was still kind of young. I think it's when I was in middle school, like later in middle school. I thought my parents were millionaires. They're like 12, maybe 13. Yeah, like legit. I thought that we were millionaires. I thought we had a lot of money. And I went to a private school um, in Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. And so I was around a lot of people that had a lot of money. I mean, I really didn't think about that back then, but sitting here now, I see what their families did and what they are and all of that. And I was surrounded by money. And so I was like, oh, okay. Like I'm no different than this. I, I, I didn't make any, it didn't register for me. I had everything I needed. My parents you know, if I wanted to go to a movie, like I could go to a movie, um, those kinds of things, like everything was met for me. I so I really didn't think about it until later on when um, I, it presented itself. And I can't remember like exactly what the whole story was. I just remember being like having a conversation, like I think very candidly, very chill with my parents one day. And I was just like, so I know we're millionaires. So like, where, when do we get, I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about, but something along those when, lines. When do I get my convertible? When do I get my, <laughs> where's my payout for existing? Um, Mia, and my Mia. parents were like, what the hell? What do we do with this girl? <laughs> like, what did we do wrong? Um, but they thought it was probably a little endearing and hilarious and also like, holy crap, <laughs> we're going to have trouble with this one. So there, I have a lot of stories to say about money. Hi, we are the Messiah Kids. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking subscribe now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. And <laughs> listen, did you did you ever get any sort of allowance or commission or anything like that? I did not. I did not. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You know what? You so uh, <laughs> we've tried it a couple of times, and on our most recent iteration, uh-huh. uh, I decided that we were not going to give our kids an allowance. Mm-hmm. Rather, they were going to earn a commission. <laughs> the way you say stuff sometimes is well, just hilarious well, to me. Well, okay. Yeah, no, they're so get a commission. Yeah, no, they're gonna earn a commission because the crazy thing is, right? Uh-huh. Get in allowance. Kids' little crazy, stupid brains is like, oh, I get the allowance because I'm cute and uh-huh. daddy loves me and mommy loves me. But if you say to them, hey. You need to earn this commission. (laughs) Okay, so you're changing the language at a young age. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and and because they have chores. I mean, Mm -hmm. come on. These kids wake up, eat, sleep, and poop, sweep, take out the trash, do something. You know? You're so funny. Yeah. No, they uh, are earning that commission. Yeah. I think it's so interesting. Um, it's just so interesting. I think for growing up, my family, um, uh, I am like one of my parents is really uh, cautious about money. And then the other ones 
not not cautious, but the other one's more like, you know, I make my money, so I want to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. The free Um, spirit. Yeah. And um, I think their their whole thing with us, with my sister and I growing up was education, 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 education. Mm -hmm. And um, they both had to work really hard when they were um, growing up. And I think they just didn't want there to be that for them, that barrier. They wanted to give us what they didn't have. And that was, we got good grades. So we behaved well there. We, I mean, I really was an ideal child. Um, (laughs) If I do say so myself, I really was, I didn't, Mm. I really didn't, you know, uh, try to, but see though, is that is that is that enough though? Just because you're an easy child, is that enough? Is that all it takes? I mean, I had to get, I mean, certainly I couldn't misbehave and I couldn't, I had to get good grades and I still had to do chores around the house. But I think the focus in my home growing up was um education number one two we were the first ones I was the first cousin really and on both sides to go to college so we were very like um education focused so a job we could have just in the summertime but it wasn't what the main focus was yeah and that is definitely privilege yeah where you know you don't need everyone to work to contribute to the, mm-hmm. to the household. Mm-hmm. Um, after, so my dad died when I was nine and mm-hmm. soon after he died, I wanted to work because I saw my mom struggling. Yeah. Struggling three kids in the house. He died like, if not the year of, but the year after they, they bought a house. Mm-hmm. So imagine having to mm-hmm. juggle mm-hmm. all that. Yeah, that's a lot. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm looking for a job. And my mom was like, oh, hell no. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell no. And I'm like, what do you mean? So she was like, yeah, no, you're going to go to school. You're going to get good grades. You're going to, you're going to do better than this here where you Mm -hmm. a little money. And then next thing you know, the money feels good. And then you're less (laughs) focused on school. So I didn't, I didn't get a job until I think it would have been like January of my senior year. So I had like four months left before I graduated high school. Okay. And I had been trying to get a job for years, but that was when she finally gave up. That was also when I turned 18. So she was like, I need to get on board because he's probably going to do it anyways. (laughs) And yeah, I started, I was helping with bills and, um, you know, I had like my car, paying my own car insurance. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to have some pretty interesting conversations because the contrast. Oh, sure, we are. I'm the contrast sure. is real, Mia. Yeah, I know. And I, and I also saw like, um, like when I got into high school, like some of my friends were working, like hardworking. Some were helping to support their, their family, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. Some like, you know, didn't have to do anything like myself. I mean, I, I don't want to say I didn't do anything. I had to get, I really had to get good grades and I couldn't step out. But other than that, like. But Mia, you know, mm-hmm. I understand. And, and so mm-hmm. this is me just like being your, your good friend here. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah having to like really work hard and get good grades yeah doesn't match up (laughs) i hear you and i know it felt like a real struggle at the time no i don't think it i i mean i was a good student so it really wasn't that much of a struggle for me but i even worse you know i hear what you're saying and i was totally in a situation of being um presented uh, an opportunity of privilege and where my parents, not so much, they would have a different story to tell about their money. And I think that's why they were so 
I don't want to say lenient, but maybe that's about a good word because they knew how hard it was and they didn't necessarily want that for us. No. And that's for sure. You definitely don't want your kids to struggle like you have, especially when it comes to money. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I can recall missing out on like school field trips Mm -hmm. because my mom didn't have like the eight bucks or 11 bucks, whatever it was back, Mm -hmm. back then, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, that's just a fact of life, you know? Yeah. I'm not going, I'll stay with this class. Or if it was an all day thing, you stay home. And that's just the way it was, Mm -hmm. you know? But um, this is uh, when, when parents, oh, this is where I'm going. When parents are like, when they actively remove some of these like struggles. Yeah. And this is one struggle of being a parent. This is why it's so damn hard. Mm -hmm. There is something in the struggle. Right. And if you're set up in a situation where the struggle is not there, like Mm -hmm. inherent in your situation, Mm -hmm. in my case, I manufacture some kind of struggle. Mm. like there has to be something that makes the that engenders this um resiliency you know this like uh dealing with some some put uh, put downs and knockdowns and disappointments you know what i mean right it's it's a very interesting conversation and maybe i'll have to have my sister on for this because we have very different ideals about money like my sister's great and I it's just it makes my it makes her and I laugh because she's like where did you come from like how did you not like how did you not (laughs) get that Mm -hmm. like I got that and I'm like I don't know it's first born I don't know (laughs) I don't know you know um so it's so but she does she does she has always been great with her money um I, out of the two of us have always worked longer. I started working when I was 16. Yeah. Um, so I was like, that was, that was my money. I always, yeah, it was my play money. 100%. You know, I always thought I, I thought I'm thinking to myself now, like, I always thought money was like this fluid thing. Like you had it and then you don't. And then you go and you work again and then you have some more and then you spend it all. And (laughs) like, I really did. I had this and we're going to, we're really going to get into some of this stuff like in the series, but I was like, yeah, money is good. It comes, it goes, it comes, it goes. And it does, but, (laughs) but, you know, I think now let me say this because you're talking about the struggle and I definitely fell hard on my face when it came with money. The struggle happened. It just was prolonged, I guess. Delayed. 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 That's Mm -hmm. a good word. Delayed until I was a little older and I made some not great mistakes like in my twenties with money. That was kind of hard to to come out of, but Mm -hmm. Up until my, you know, my childhood, I was living like a little gangsta. I was like, you know, had no care. I was making my mom and dad's money rain. Uh huh. You know, it's funny you say that, right? So Azriel and Tamar, Jason, not so much. He does. Jason doesn't really care. You know, he has five bucks. He goes and he wants to buy something that's fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't really quite understand the concept yet. He's coming. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't quite get it. But they'll say things to me like, oh, so daddy, um, this year for my birthday, uh, there's this like really cool uh, ice cream shop. I'd like to go there. I'm like, okay, cool. Where is this? Oh, it's in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, no problem. I said, what? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, <laughs> you want to go to like Los Angeles, California, or like is there a Los Angeles in South Florida that I don't know about? <laughs> and so she did, they don't quite understand. I so I think I, they either don't understand or they just assume that well, mommy and daddy works and mommy and daddy have money, so they love me. It's my birthday, 
why not i can get what i want and so that's when i'm that's like so funny so so what i naturally do and i mean of course we'll talk about this some more i said so do me a favor go go budget it out for me and let me know what it would cost <laughs> okay so then like last time she wanted to go to hawaii and uh she came back and she realized the plane tickets the cost of plane tickets mm -hmm. times five and then hotel i have her do all that that's good and so she came back and was like you know what daddy i don't think it's gonna happen i said why not <laughs> <laughs> and she told me but that's what i mean the disappointments right so what that begins to do is maybe not we don't go to la but maybe we check out a little pastry shop in miami maybe you know or maybe mm -hmm. we go to orlando you know and so it's a constant uh conversation in my house for sure mm -hmm. but i see it's not just them it's it's all <laughs> of you spoiled spoiled babies <laughs> yeah. yeah um and, she, and she's the firstborn too and girl so i don't know maybe there's something there I think birth order definitely has something to do with it. All the love and affection and goodies are given to you. And um, well, un unless you're born poor. Um, well, and there you go. Unless you were born poor, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, no, I'm good here. I don't have no money for that. I'm good. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we're going to have this conversation and more over the mm -hmm. next uh, several weeks. We'll also talk about um, marriage, specifically marriage and money, because the conversation about finances, whether together or separate, mm -hmm. um, what works, what doesn't, which is better, right? There's also this whole thing about That was my alarm. There's also this whole thing about it's better to do it this way versus that way. And, you know, we can debate that. You guys feel free to let me know what 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 it is you guys are doing or any ideas now leading up to the series, because we really definitely want to include some of your um, your thoughts and ideas. Mm -hmm. um, what's something else we're going to be doing? Um. We're going to be doing, uh, going to be talking about like money and your friendships. Friendships, yes. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the in laws too. Uh huh. The in laws. Um, how does it play a factor in dating? Mm -hmm. I can, um, for both the man and the woman, or we don't have to do genders here, just in general. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to unpack with this money matters series and i just just this little tidbit of an intro for it is just making me smile because i can just <laughs> imagine you know we have very different backgrounds and and essentially ended in the same place um doing uh, in a helping profession so it's always so interesting to hear your side and come at me with different perspectives and hard truths just like this podcast suggests yeah, you know i you know i will i know you will you know i will you know i remember i think mitt romney he was running for uh uh i think president of some election don't mm -hmm. remember which one but he was trying to say how much of a struggle he and his wife had mm. and i don't know if you recall this but he said you know my wife and i we struggled and there was one point where you know, we had to sell some of our stock <laughs> to pay for college. And social media media just ripped him a new one. I see that a lot with, with um, celebrities who are just kind of, uh, most notably, I would say, recently have been the Kardashians. Like, they'll post things at the, like, most terrible time. Like, something happens and they're flaunting their wealth and people are just tearing them to shreds like mm -hmm. you're it's so you're so insensitive and you're so this and you're so that yeah. yeah yeah it's it's interesting how one's perception of their struggle translates yeah. to a different group 
Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes mm-hmm. it just does not translate at all. Mm-hmm. And sometimes other people just love to hate on people with money. Mm-hmm. You know, which is which is why people who have money tend to not even complain, even, and they just kind of end up struggling silently. Mm-hmm. You know, because no one, few people, I should say, few people can understand or offer um, any kind of empathy or sympathy. Right. You know, they're just like, dude, you just bought a hundred thousand dollar car. Shut mm-hmm. up. Just shut <laughs> up, you know. But so yeah, this money is definitely an interesting and provocative conversation. And that's the conversation we'll be having um over the the, the next several weeks, well, however long this month is. Um I, I will say this, listen, um I am not a finance professional i don't know if mia is i am definitely not a finance (laughs) professional (laughs) as i'm sure it's been alluded to in Uh, this (laughs) yeah the the opinions expressed in this podcast are merely (laughs) those of the hosts uh they are in no way intended to tell you what to do listen y'all make your own damn mind about your own damn money Sure. And uh, don't blame us, please. Yeah. <laughs> and if you the... want to know what not to do, yeah. I can give you some unsolicited advice for that. Oh, for sure. And we can come <laughs> up. We can come up with all kinds of emotional and mental health reasons why, but <laughs> would still tell you check a financial professional. Definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for today. Thank <laughs> you for joining us. Uh, check us out in social media. Hit us up when you uh, share this with your friends, leave a review, um, let us know what you think and what you want to hear, because we are uh, actively planning this at, th- at this time, at this moment, and we'd like to have your voice in it. Uh, we look forward to having you join us for this series. And um, if you've not heard it, okay, I always want you to know we appreciate you and we do love you and this is why we're here. And we don't take it for granted. Thank you for checking us out. And we'll catch you next time for another episode of Relationship Renegade. Bye now.